TCI is brought to you by prolific Sire of Sires, Unbridled Song, standing at TaylorMade Stallions. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Breeders' Cup. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Joel, we have a lot to talk about this weekend, so let's jump right in. You know what? Let's go ahead and launch a TCI Top 5 for the Philly and Mare Sprint. While we were gone, we saw a win in your in race. It was the A-Gleam Stakes. We see the winner of this race in at number five. Her name is Book Review. Joel, she looked great in her win. Tell me why you got her in at number five. Well, John, the Philly and Mare Sprint since its induction a few years ago has been one of the better, more intriguing races in my opinion. I think it's a great betting race every year at that middle distance. It's at seven furlongs on the dirt. You mentioned book review. She won the A-Gleam. We'll take a quick look at the Twin Spires TV race replay. And we'll hit the play button here, pick him up at the top of the stretch. Teddy's promise here, two wide coming in the stretch. Got some pace pressure. She's the filly I wanted to see step up in here. She runs up and down here, a flat performance for her. And you see Bob Baffert's filly off a little layoff, turning back in distance to where she likes to be. Seven furlongs making that one run late. She draws clear here, John. She's already a grade one winner winning the La Brea at Santa Anita at seven furlongs right. at that specialist distance. So you have to have her in the top five, particularly off of this performance. So a big winning year in performance here. She's going to be in your Breeders' Cup Philly Mare Sprint field if she can keep sound now for the rest of the year. And I think she's a top player for Bob Baffert. I'm going to have to put her in the number five spot. She got a 101 brisk rating in here. And I thought she beat a pretty good field, John. So for me, she's the closer to contend with going forward at seven furlongs in November. All right, at number four, we see Renee's got zip. Joel, she earned a 108 brisk last time out in an allowance, but don't let that allowance fool you. It was a top field, including executive privilege. This filly has always been brilliant, John. A four-year-old filly by City Zip here. Uh, wanted to run her in the, in the Princess Rooney. Couldn't get a flight out there to, to Calder, where she would have probably been your favorite. They had her entered into the in the um, A-Gleam stakes, decided to scratch out of there, running this allowance. But it was a tough allowance. I mean, you mentioned executive privilege for Bob Baffert making a comeback, a legitimate multiple grade one winner. And the way that she ran her off her feet, John, she's just so brilliant. She might be a little better from six to six and a half furlongs, but that 108 brisk rating just knocks you square in the forehead when you look at it. You have to have her in the top five, in my opinion. She likes Santa Anita so much. Seven furlongs is a little bit of a question mark, but she's so brilliant. She belongs to that top five, and she's fresh going forward for the second half of the year. All right, at number three, we have Midnight Lucky. This is another brilliant filly. She's already a grade one winner this year. You got her in at number three. Another Bob Baffert training, a brilliant three-year-old. I mean, for her to win the Acorn over Kwai Katie and a very accomplished group, the way that she did in her fourth lifetime start. I mean, got a big brisk net number in there. Just a runaway winner. This filly, filly is so brilliant, John. She has a high cruising speed, but she can also rate and, and show that closing punch that she did in the acorn, John. So I just think she has a ton of talent here. Going forward, more experience under her belt. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with her. I was expecting her to run the Prioress this weekend against Kwai Katie, who I think lays over that Prioress field. Kwai Katie not making the list because she's probably better around six, six and a half furlongs. But seven furlongs at a middle distance, I think that's what Midnight Lucky's made for. So I want to see where she's going to come back. But for me, at Santa Anita at the end of the year for Bob Baffert with a little experience under her belt, she's going to be very tough in this division. I'll tell you, Philly, who's going to be tough? The one you got in at number two. We spoke to Buff Bradley earlier today. Groupie Doll, he says she's back. Joel, she looks like she's going to be ready to go this fall. Yeah, and you see no brisk number next to her name because she hasn't run yet this year. Right. After that big cigar mile performance where she almost beat the boys, we know how good she is after the fact that she's a, a defending champion in this division, John. But she, you know, went a little bad uh, at the end of the year and maybe got a little sour. She ran so hard. They gave her time off. Reportedly doing very well. Is going to be ready at the beginning of September. Probably take the same campaign. The Masters at Prescow, then come back second off the layoff in the TCA, which is a win and you're in at Keeneland like she did last year, and then go back to defend her, her title in the Philly and Mare Sprint, John. She's certainly the horse to beat if she's on her A game. The question is, will she come back on her A game? Because the division's so good, she's going to have to. Well, at number one, you got maybe one of the, the, the best fillies out there, and that is Beholder. The biggest question mark, though, do they run her in the sprint or do they run her in the Ladies Classic? After the Breeders, or excuse me, after the Kentucky Oaks and Princess Silmar beating her that day, she was so game. But to me, she's a middle distance filly, particularly at Santa Anita. She's really good at seven furlongs. I think that, you know, after this freshening, her coming back, be interested to see what they do with her. I think the, the Ladies Classic will be tempting, but 
I would hope that they would try her at a middle distance. That's where she best fits. And she's so game. She's so brilliant, John, and so classy that she has to be number one for me. If they point for that Philly Mare Sprint, I truly think she could be one of the Phillies to beat in there. All right, well, let's switch now from the Phillies to the Colts because we have a ton to talk about here. Joel, we see a lot of the horses in the classic division, three-year-olds and older horses. Let's start off with the Jim Dandy at Saratoga on Saturday. Joel, we see Palace Malice, My Loot, Vijack. I mean, this race is stacked with good three-year-olds. It, it really is, and it's officially your start to the second half of the year for the three-year-olds. You're prepped for the Travers, then also the Haskell, which we'll, which we'll talk about, which runs this Sunday. But I think this is all Palace Malice. I mean, all reports are that he's even doing better since the Belmont than he was going into. He's taking wow. that next step. I think my loot, a very crafty move by Tom Amos to go off of the Haskell point for this type of race to where he should get a speed set up because you have Marino and Freedom Child, both on the front end who should be duking it out, setting it up pretty good. Palace Malice should be stalking that group. And then Code West, another cult that's interesting from Bob Baffert. All right, let's stay on Saturday, but let's go to the West Coast and talk about the San Diego because, Joel, we see our number one on the TCI top five here for the classic older horses, and, of course, that's Painter. He's going against Liaison in here. What do yeah. you think about his chances? Well, I think Painter is uh, by far the best horse in the race, but the poly track can be a bit of an equalizer, John. I mean, we, we don't know how he's going to run over that. Now, all reports is as a two-year-old, he trained very well over that poly track, that synthetic at Del Mar. However, the way they train over and the way they run over are two different things. So be interesting to see. Uh, this is a risky spot having to run him back on the poly here, to where he could face a horse like Liaison, horse like Kettle Corn. That you know, mm. if you look at what he did last time out with blinkers on. Kettle Corn clearly took a step up, gave game on dude everything he wanted. So it's not going to be an easy test for Painter. Joel, let's move now to Sunday, the race of the weekend. It's the Haskell Invitational, a race we've been waiting for. Joel, we see this race stacked with top three-year-olds, including Oxbow, Power Broker. But you know the favorite? It might be Verrazano. You know, I agree with you, John. This race is so top-heavy. Be interested to see how the betters play it. I think Verrazano might be your slight favorite off that local prep win. Obviously, we know from the Wood Memorial, he can handle a mile and an eighth. Coming into the race, great. However, he's going to get plenty of early pace pressure in here, plenty of tactical pressure, namely from Oxbow, maybe Chief Havoc. But talk about Oxbow, John. I mean, one of the Preakness, we know how razor tough he is. We know his cruising speed is his weapon. I think he can give Verrazano a ton of problems. And so now in this race, I'm starting to look for somebody who can maybe come from off the pace. And I think this sets up, once again, for Bob Baffert to bring a California horse in here to potentially win this. It would be a slight upset this year, but for me, a horse that we have at number two on the TCI Top 5 right now for the three-year-old classic division going forward to the end of the year. I just think this Colt has a big second half of the year in his plans. I like the fact that running him off of sharp work, and I think he could post a slight opposite from off the pace in here. All right, let's move now back out to California. You know, it's the only winning you're in to talk about this weekend, and it's in the sprint division. Yep. Joel, of course, I'm talking about the Bing Crosby. We see Jimmy Creed back in here. Kind of surprised to see Mandela running this Colt back in here. Yeah, but I think that speaks volumes to how well he's doing. I mean, for a conservative trainer like Mandela, after as poorly as Jimmy Creed ran last time out, John, in the triple bend, and now come right back, you know, when he threw a shoe that day, bruised a foot, he's obviously doing very well. They liked his, bullet, his, his sharp half-mile work like this past week coming in. I think he's the best horse in the race, John. The poly track's a bit of a question. We know Majestic City, off that good prep race uh, where he ran second to Painter, right. we know he likes uh, uh, certainly the poly track, as well as Common to the Top, who might be the top six to six and a half furlong horse in California, the speedball out there, and even Golden Sense, the three-year-old who's shown a lot of quality and a lot of speed. He's cutting back around one turn. But to me, it's Jimmy Creed's, you know, his race to lose, John, if he runs his A race. All right, thank you, Joel. I know it was a lot of input. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap all these races, and we'll give you another top five. Play the $50,000 Summer Showdown at TwinSpires.com. Through September 1st, parlay winning $10 show bets into thousands. But only when you play at TwinSpires.com, where players win.